All right, g'day guys, welcome to the Mets office. Hope you had a good week and having a good Friday. What we're gonna to do today, we're gonna to tackle a couple of questions that we've had sent through throughout the week. Um, a few common ones have come up, which is good, so hopefully this will clear a couple of things up. The first thing we're gonna talk about is, we've had a few people wanting to know the difference between VO2 max and AVO2 difference. Now I think having that um, VO2 appearing in both of those is, is causing some confusion. While they are related, they are, are very different. The VO2 means two very different things in both of those. So I've got my assistant here, which I'm going to bring up and see if hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, the definition for VO2 max, um, if we break it down in VO2 max, we typically say a capital V for volume. Right, we've just shortened volume down to V. O2, of course, meaning oxygen and max meaning maximum. So VO2 max, we talk about the maximum volume of oxygen that we can take in transport and utilize per minute. So that requires uh, all of our systems, so respiratory systems, we need to be able to breathe air in from the atmosphere to start with. We can then, through pulmonary diffusion, get the oxygen from the air into the bloodstream. Uh, the heart, which is um, cardiac output, responsible for circulating blood around the body. We transport the oxygen inside red blood cells. That will be uh, carried around the body um, and then utilized at the muscles through diffusion at the muscles. So if you were to look it up, you might find an equation like this, if you can see that one. Uh, this says that VO2 max is equal to Q multiplied by, and there's a whole bunch of what looks to be quite confusing there. That is the um, oxygen in the arteries minus the oxygen in the veins, so we can work out how much has been diffused at the muscles, Q meaning cardiac output. So this here is actually our AVO2 difference. So to get VO2 max, we take cardiac output and we multiply by AVO2 difference. AVO2 difference, the V in AVO2 difference is completely different to the V in VO2 max. In VO2 max, V is volume. AVO2 difference actually means arteriovenous, arteriovenous oxygen difference. Now, it might be easier for you guys to think of the A as arteries and the V as veins. A for arteries, V for veins, O2 for oxygen. D for difference. The difference in the concentration of the oxygen in the arteries and in the veins. So, yes, they're related. So if we go all the way back, we breathe air in, we go through pulmonary diffusion, the oxygen gets into the bloodstream carried by the red blood cells, hemoglobin, and then the arteries are going to be responsible for carrying that oxygenated blood around the body. To actually get that oxygen out of the blood into the muscles where we're going to need it, we're going to need our capillaries. Our capillaries are going to be the site of diffusion at the muscles. Once our muscles diffuse the oxygen out of the blood that they need, CO2 goes back in. The deoxygenated blood is then going to travel through veins, back around to the heart and lungs, so we can breathe the CO2 out into the atmosphere, breathe in fresh air, get some oxygen. All right, that is our AVO2 difference. So, a little, uh, I've done a tiny little uh, diagram here to show Basically, AVO2 difference at rest and exercise. Uh, this red here, that is indicating our arteries. That has got the oxygenated blood, the oxygen-rich blood in it. Right there, I've done our capillaries. So our really thin-walled capillaries that allow diffusion to occur. Oxygen is going to diffuse out towards the muscles. CO2 will diffuse back in. Then we have our veins carrying our deoxygenated blood. All right, at rest, the oxygen demand at the muscles is really low. So let's say out of every 100 oxygen molecules that travel down the arteries, the muscles are only taking a small amount, meaning in the veins we still have 80 oxygen molecules. 80 out of those 100 have survived, they're still in the veins. That would give us an AVO2 difference of 20. The difference between 180 is 20. Fairly straightforward. During exercise, our muscles need more oxygen. So we can see in this situation, out of every 100 oxygen molecules traveling through the arteries, the muscles are going to diffuse more oxygen out so they can use that for aerobic respir respiration, aerobic energy. In this case, it's left only 40 oxygen molecules in the veins. We have an AVO2 difference of 60 here, the difference between the arteries and the veins. Um, hopefully that's uh, cleared that up. So VO2 max versus AVO2 difference. Yes, they are related to each other, but the actual VO2 in that meaning two different things. Um, shoot through any questions if that still doesn't make sense. The second one that I want to talk about that follows on from what we've been doing this week is about fuel. So if you haven't, there's a, a fuel, uh, had a 10 minute video on fuels in our Instagram TV, follows on from our energy system characteristics earlier in the week. We had four multiple choice questions go up yesterday, which I've addressed in a post today. 
Um, but this question in particular um, has come through from a few people. People said, what is the best fuel? There is no answer to what is the best fuel without some context. So if we talk about our, our fuels, our chemical fuels of ATP and PC, and then our food fuels of carbohydrates and fats, I'm not going to worry about proteins. They all have um, upsides and downsides. The upsides of our PC, our ATP, our chemical fuels, is that they can break down immediately. So if I need energy straight away, that's going to be my go-to fuel. If I go from sitting here and I all of a sudden need to run away from something, I want to sprint, then those PC fuels, they're really good. They can be broken down immediately. They don't need oxygen. So they're going to give me really explosive energy. So if I'm going to sprint, if I'm going to do uh, high jump, javelin, shot put as my sporting examples, less than 10 seconds, very explosive, maximal effort, PC, ATP, they are my go-to, they are my best fuels. There is, of course, a downside, they are going to run out really quickly. Two seconds of stored ATP, about 10 seconds of stored PC, and then we're done with those chemical fuels. Uh, in terms of our carbohydrates or our fats, carbohydrates we're going to store as blood glucose or glycogen in the muscle and liver. Um, carbohydrates are good because we can break them down quite simply. We can break them down without oxygen even, so that is our anaerobic glycolysis. So again, high intensity, if we're going to run a 400 meter on the track, we're going to do repeat max efforts. The ability to break down that fuel, that glycogen without oxygen, that is a good thing. We can do it really quick, really explosive energy. There is of course a downside, when we break down glycogen without oxygen, we get uh, fatiguing metabolic byproducts, so lactic acids produced. Again, if I'm going to want to sprint for a minute, glycogen is definitely my go-to fuel. There's going to be some downsides to it. For a longer period of time, if I want to run, um, let's say, a, a 10 kilometer race, which could take um, anywhere from 30 to 40 to 50 minutes, something like that, depending on, depending on who we are. When we run 10Ks, we are still running quite hard. It's a reasonably, it's what we'd call a moderate, I suppose, moderate to a high intensity. Anytime we want to work hard run fast glycogen is good because we break it down simply when we have oxygen we can break it down and we can do that for a long period of time without fatiguing byproducts heat water and co2 are the byproducts when we get a complete breakdown of glycogen with oxygen present so that's good we can do it simply we can do it quickly there's always a downside the downside here is that we can only store a certain amount of glycogen in the body about two hours worth of exercise we can store before we are going to run out and you might hear the term hitting the wall which means we've run out of glycogen. So what that would mean is if I'm just going to sit here, I'm going to be at work all day, and my body's going to be constantly breaking down glycogen to give me fuel, well, I'm going to run out. I'm going to run out of that um, at some stage, and then if I want to go out and go for a run, well, I've got no glycogen, so that's going to impede me. So fats, fats certainly have their place. We have a really huge amount of fat stores in the body, about 100,000 calories worth of fat stores, which is, could last me probably, let's say, two weeks of not eating before I fully burn through my fat stores. The downside of trying to use fat as a fuel is that it is very slow to break down a fat molecule. It takes a lot of oxygen and it is very slow. So if I want to run fast, ride my bike fast, swim fast, anything like that, I'm not going to be able to do that too well with fats because I won't be able to get my energy quick enough. So if I want to run fast for a long period of time, glycogen is good, but it will run out after about two hours. If I want to walk, just you know, jog, walk, sit around for, for six hours, well then fat is my best option because it's not going to run out at that low intensity. I've got enough oxygen available. I've got enough time to break down those fat stores. So that would be my go-to. So what is the best fuel? It depends what we want to do. If we want to sprint, then those chemical fuels are really good. Explosive energy, we break them down really quick, but we do run out. If we want to run um, or work at a, at a moderate to high intensity, Carbohydrates stored as glycogen or glucose, they're our go-to. We can break them down with or without oxygen. Um, even with oxygen, we don't need too much and we can get that energy reasonably quickly. If we want to save those glycogen stores for later, because we're just going to do really low, in, we're sitting around, we're at rest, we're doing low intensity exercise, we're walking, well then fats are our best option because we have time and oxygen to break those down and we won't run out of those. We can save um, those glycogen stores for if later on we do need to use them in a more high intense um, type of activity. Alright, I hope that's cleared those questions up for you guys. Um, if you have anything that's happening with your remote learning, anything you see uh, in your textbook, on a video online, uh, if you've come to one of our sessions and you, you want to clear something up, if your teachers explain something and you want to clear something up, send us a message. We're going to do question and answers every Friday, so um, 
anything that you want to cover in more detail or you want to clarify, send that through to us and we'll get to it. Otherwise, I hope your remote learnings go well and have a good weekend.